Hey guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to John 21, X 1 to 5, Proverbs 25, and Psalm 62. Let's get started. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in the this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathanael of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. They went out and got into the boat. That night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. On the shore. And yet the disciples did not know that he was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were on, not able to haul it, because of the quantity of fish. And the disciple, who, who, whom Jesus loved, therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, while he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. And other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. No, they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. <laughs> then when they got on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid on, out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. Simon and Peter went aboard and held the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. So now none of the disciples did ask him. Who are you? They knew it was the law. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to her and served with the fish. This is now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished breakfast, he said to Simon, he, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to me, him, feel my legs. He said to him, the second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. He knows that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, and truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said, and after saying this, he said to him, follow me. And Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus would love following him. The one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he will remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So the saying spread about abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die. But it is my will that he will remain until I come. Who is that to you? This is my, the disciple who is bearing witness. It was bearing with us about these things. And who was reading these things? And no and we know that his testimony is true. Now there are so many other things that Jesus made. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Acts one to five. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus grew, began to do and teach, until the day that he was taken up, taken up after he had given commands through the, through the Holy Spirit and to the apostles whom he had chosen. He was sent himself alive to them, but after suffering by many proofs, um, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to await for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. So John baptized with water, and that you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, Is it not for you to know times or seasons? Seasons that the Father speaks by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking around, he was lifted up, and the cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, he held two men stood by them in white robes. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This, this Jews, who is taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. When they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, the Sabbath day's journey is their way. And they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the son of Zebra, 
who reduced the centuries. All this with one accord, who were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the woman, and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before him the mouth of David, by the mouth of David concerning this, concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. When he was numbered among us in the last, was a lot of history in this ministry. Mm. Uh, it is written in the book of Psalms, where his can become desolate, and there be no one to draw in it, and let, us another t- let another take his office. So one of the men who have uncom- who accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, even from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men was become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward to Joseph called Barsabas, who was also called Justice, and, Ma- and Matthias. And they say, hey, you Lord, you know the hearts of all. Show which one of these two, which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry. And Apostle Shea was Judas, which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots, and, and the lot fell on Matthias, Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. And the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly they came from heaven and sounded like a Russian, mighty Russian wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And their delighted tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every, every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together. Multitude came to death, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished. They are not all these people who are speaking Galilean. And how is it that we hear each of us, each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cap- Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome. There's Jews and there's Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God, and all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? Now others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. The Simon, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who draw in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. Well, these people are not drunk, as you suppose. So it is only the third hour of the day. And this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, like blood and fire, and blood and fire, and a vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood. Behold, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus and Nazareth, a man are attested to you by God with mighty works, and wonders and signs that God do, and healing illness. For you yourselves know that this Jesus delivering us, delivered up according to the definite plan, and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of the Lord's men. God raised him up, loosening, loosening the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Well, David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is on my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced, and my flesh also will draw in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the past of life, you will make me full of gladness in your presence. You have others, may I may say to you with confidence that the patriarch David, that he both died, and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that he will set one of his descendants on his throne, he also on and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, and he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. His Jews were by a raised up, and of that we are we all are witnesses. He therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And that all the house is I will therefore know for certain that God has made him both the Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And when they heard this name, were cut to the heart, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
But the promise is for you and for your children, for all who are far off. Everyone who the Lord God who calls himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourself from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added and there were added that day about three thousand three thousand souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were seeing their, selling their possession and bringing belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their hands, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Now he and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, in the ninth hour, and a man late from birth was being carried, and they lay down within the gate of the temple, that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms, and Peter directed his gaze, as did John, and said, Look at us. And then he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. And he said, I have no soul of God, but I have, but what I do I have given to you. I, what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, and that's us, rise up and walk. And took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and angles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk, and entered the temple with him. Walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple, asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And all who clung to Peter and John, all he utterly astounded and ran together to them in the portico, portico that, is sold, that is called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? And well, why do you stare at us? As though by our own power and pity, or by a tea we have made him walk, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, and glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate. And he desired to release, but you denied the holy and righteous, and the righteous one, and asked for a murder to be granted to you, and killed the author of life, author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see in there. And faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rules, that what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, as soon as Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repeat, repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blown, that times of refreshing, of refreshing, of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ upon him for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until to the time for restoring, restoring all the things about which God spoke. As the mouth of his holy prophets long ago, Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who, who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him, those who proclaimed these days, You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant of God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servants, sent them to you first, to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. And as they were speaking to the people, the priest and captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day. It was already evening. Many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem. This Arnus, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priest's holy family, and when they had set them in their midst, they inquired, By what power, or by what by what name did you do this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Those are the people and others. And if we are being examined today, if there's any good deed done to a good man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all the and to all the people of Islam that by the name by the name your yeah. by the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, whom you crucified, 
Crucify whom God raised from the dead. By him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, who is, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated, common men. They were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the men who had been here standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. When they commanded them to leave the castle, they conferred with another one of the same. What shall we do with these men? Uh, that a notable sign had been performed through them that is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. And in order that it may be spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this place. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered, Whenever it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to draw, we must do it. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen in her. Then they had further threatened them, and then they let them go, finding no way to punish them. It was the people of all oppression from her heaven, for the man on whom the sign of healing was performed was more than forty years old. When they, when they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priest and the elders had said to them. And when they heard, they lifted their voices together to God and said, "To Rainbow, who made the heaven and the earth and the and the, and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, that the by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the people people's part of it? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers were gathered together, and the Lord and against us and nothing." And uh, truly in this city, they were gathered together against the Holy Spirit, Jesus, whom we are not to, with Herod and Pontius Pilate, and all of the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan and her predestined to take place. Now, Lord, look upon their threat and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your Holy Spirit, Jesus. And when they had prayed, and the place in which they gathered together was shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. And the full number of those who believed were, were of one heart. And so no one said that any of the things that belonged to him were of his own. Was of his own. But they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them. There was no resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Not a new person, however. For as many as were the owners of lands or houses sold them and brought with the seeds of all sold and laid at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus, Jairus, who was also called by the apostles, Barnabas, which was son of infection and Levite, and they to the disciples sold a few of that belonged to him, and, and brought the money and laid at his the apostles' feet. And a man named Ananias, with his life, Sapphira, sold a piece of property, where with his wife's knowledge, he kept back things for himself, some of the proceeds, and brought only part of it, a part of it, and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why is Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit, and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds, part of the proceeds of your building? While it remained unsold, did it not remain for your own? Your own. Your own. And after yourself, what's in all your respect? Why is it that you can try this deed in your heart? You have not lied to this man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and broke his last, and he gave him upon all who heard of it. The young man rose and bribed him up and carried him out and buried him. Then, after an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, Tell me whether you sold the lair for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? He held the feet of those who had buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down on her feet and buried her last. The young men came and they found her dead. And they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church, and then upon all who heard of these things. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people, by the hands of the apostles, and they were all done together in Simon's portico. And the rest were to join the hands of the people held in high school. And more than ever, believers were added to them. I'll choose both where man and woman. So that even carry so so they so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats. That, that as people came by, that at least a shadow might fall on some. If you were to gather from the towns, from the towns around Jerusalem, then the sick and those that were sick unclean spirit, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up and all who were with him and filled with jealousy. 
They arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out. And he said, "Go stand in the temple. I stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life." And they heard this. They entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now, when the high priest came and those who were they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, and went to the prison to have them brought. And when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned to the court. They found the prison securely locked, and with the guards standing at the doors. And when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now, when the captain of the temple and the chief priest had these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering who, what this would come to. And someone came and said, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And the captain and the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they brought them, they set them before the captain, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name, yet, yet here you fill Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And then Peter and the apostle there said, We must obey God rather than men, so the God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom we killed by hanging him on a tree. The God exalted him as my hand as leader and saviour, to give repentance unto Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When he heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill him. The Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, the teacher of the law, held an honour. While the people stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said, Men of Israel, take care of what you are about to do with these men. For well, before these days, through this verse, I was claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about four hundred, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. And after him, Jews the Galilee, and rose up in the days of the census, and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So you're in the presence of case, I tell you, keep away from those men, and let them alone. For if this plan of this undertaking is a man, it will fail. But if it is your God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they called the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And they left, then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. Proverbs 25. These are our prophets of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah king of Judah copy is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is such and such. And as the heavens of for high and the earth for death, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith is material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and the stone will be established in righteousness. Go and put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great. Where it is better to be told, come up here, and do you put well in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court. But what will you do in the end when your neighbour puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbour and yourself. And do not reveal another secret. And as he who hears you bring shame upon you. And the old repute have no end. And what fitly spoken, fitly spoken is like apples of gold and serving the silver. And the gold and an ornament, ornament of gold is a wide reprover to, to a listening skull. And the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those sending his. And he refreshes the soul of his master, so my God, that's a man in without bread. He is a man who boasts of a gift he does not give. With patience, a rule may be persuaded, and his soft tongue will break a bone. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of the air and warm day. Let, you, let your fill be seldom in your neighbor's hand, lest he have his fill of you and hate you. And then he bears false witness against his neighbor, who is like a war plug or a sword, or a sharp arrow, trusting in a treacherous man in a time of trouble. It's like the bad you throw with their slips. Whoever sings songs to a heavy heart, it's like one who takes off a garment on the hook. A cold day, and like when you go on said, on said, if you're only hungry, give him bread to eat. If, if you're only thirsty, you can give him water to drink. When you'll heat bread and coals in his head, and the Lord will reward you, and then also in great for the right, and the backbiting tongue and you look. So it's better to you live in the corner of the house top, and in a house share with the little cross on my. And then call water to a thirsty soul, and so is good news from a far country. Like a mighty spring or a polluted fountain, it is like a righteous man who goes right before the wicked. It is not good to eat. Honey, well, nor is it glorious that you seek for one's own glory. A man without self control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Psalm 62.
to for God alone my soul waits in silence for in him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack the man to battle him like a leaning wall of throwing pants? They even plan to cross them down from a side position. They take pleasure in falsehood, they bless with their mass, but inwardly they curse for God alone and my soul. Oh my soul wait in silence for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, O fortress, I shall not be shaken, O God, and God rest my salvation and my glory, for my mighty rock, my refuge in God, trust in him at all times, O people, pour out your heart before him, before him. God is a refuge for us, those of the lowest day are but a breath, and those of the highest day are a delusion, and the balances they go, they, they are together lighter than a breath. No trust in the extortion, set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this. Your power belongs to God, that you, O God, belong steadfast love. And you will take render no man according to his work. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's prayer. Please by your heads, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yours today our daily bread. Forgive us the debts as you wish to forgive our debtors. He is not to temptation, but the Lord is not evil. He is the kingdom and the power and the glory of God. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.